Hi, it's Liz at Fort White. Welcome to Fort White Alive at home. We're so excited to share this virtual programming with you while you're staying safe in your own homes. So stay tuned, your Fort White Alive host is up next to guide you on your next adventure. Hi, welcome to Fort White Farms. I'm Owen, I'm the kitchen coordinator here at the farm. And today we're gonna make tea biscuits. We're going to learn what a mirepoix is, and then we're going to make a soup out of leftovers with our mirepoix. So we're going to start with the tea biscuits so that they can bake while we are making the rest of our food. Tea biscuits are such a simple bread to make quickly on a weeknight um, if you need something to go with a leftover soup that you're making. So my recipe here, we're going to put in two cups of flour. I'm using whole wheat flour today. And then we're going to put in four teaspoons of baking powder. So I've got that here. And the baking powder is what's going to help your tea biscuits rise in the oven. There we go. And then we're also going to cut in butter. So we're going to cut in uh, about a third of a cup of butter, 77 grams. I have it weighed out and it's in chunks. I'm just going to put it in there. If you have a pastry, or a pastry cutter, you can use that to squish the butter around and cut it in. Um, if you don't, you can use your hands. That's what I'm going to do. So you just want to squeeze the butter with the flour like this. Mix it in until you get a consistency that is a little bit like sand. So all of this is going to look sand. And then after that, we're going to add water to the biscuits. You can also add milk to them. Um, I've chosen water today simply because I don't have any milk. There you go. So that's sort of how you want the dough to look. And then we're going to put in water. So water is three quarters of a cup. I already have it here. Pour it in there. And you can use a spoon or a spatula to mix this around, but I'm going to end up making the dough into balls anyway with my hands, so I figure I might as well just get in there with my hands. So the dough will be the consistency of a wet cookie dough, I guess. You'll, you'll definitely be able to mold it into balls to make biscuits. So you want something about the size, a little bit bigger than a golf ball maybe, like so. And then you can just flatten it a little bit. I'm going to put those on the baking tray that I have here already. And you're going to put them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which I already have set and warmed up and bake them for 12 to 15 minutes. You can also jazz up your tea biscuits. If you have some cheese laying around, you can put cheese in them. There's some herbs laying around, parsley, cilantro in them, some rosemary. It's a really nice way to be able to get rid of some extra leftovers that are just kicking around. Then we're going to get six this in the oven. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we are going to make a mirepoix. So mirepoix is simply onions, carrots, and celery, and it's a flavor base for most French cooking, which um, is also most Western cooking. So the typical ratio for that is two parts onion to one part carrot and one part celery. I'm just going to guess because it doesn't really matter all that much. So first we're going to dice the onion up. So first we're going to cut the top of the onion off so that we have a flat spot to use. Then we're going to cut the onion in half. We're going to start over. This is compost. Oh no. We're going to use a good onion. <laughs> sure. Okay. I was doing so well oh, that time. Right, right. <clears throat> You could just start with, first we're going to put an onion, if you okay. want. Okay. Whatever you wish. Okay. First we're going to start with the onion. So we're going to cut the tip of the onion off so that we have a flat part to put our onion down on. We're going to cut the onion in half through the root, but we're going to keep the root attached for dicing. So then pull off 
I'm gonna pull off the first layer just because the paper has been sticking to the onions. So to dice a cooking onion, we're gonna cut horizontally through the onion, but not through the root tip. So we're gonna do that two times. I'm gonna turn it cut this way again, not through the root tip. Dice onion. I'm going to save that for my compost. Put the onion in here. The other half as well. So again, vertically or horizontally through the onion, but not through the root tip. This half's a bit bigger, so I'm going to do three slices. And then again, this way. So mirepoix also exist in other uh, cooking. There is an Italian soffritto, which is like a mirepoix, different name, um, and has the Italian one, I believe, is cooked in with minced vegetables instead of diced vegetables, and is cooked in olive oil, not butter. We're going to cook ours in olive oil also today, though. So next we're going to do carrots. We want, again, two parts onion to one part carrot. So I think maybe I'll just do one. We just want to dice it. So I'm going to cut this in half so that I can put the carrot on a flat side like that. And I'm going to cut it in half again, this half again. So you just want to make sure that the vegetables are about the same size, the onions, the carrots, and the celery, so that they all cook at the same speed. When you're cooking your mirepoix, you don't want to brown it. You just want to cook it low enough to release all the flavors, but not high enough to caramelize the vegetables. Uh, next we're going to do the celery and again we just want one part celery. Cut that in half and then in half lengthwise. And we'll just dice it from there. Uh, in many recipes the mirepoix is um, strained out before making the soup or the stew. Uh, we're not going to do that today. We're actually going to leave it in because we're going to make soup out of leftovers and having these vegetables in there will also be delicious. All right, so that is our mirepoix. Carrots, onion, celery. It's not that hard. Sort of the holy trinity of French cooking. I'm just going to turn the oven on so we can start cooking this. Okay, so the biscuits are out of the oven and cooling on the counter. We've got the mirepoix cooking in a heavy bottom soup uh, stock pot. And now we're going to make some leftover soup to go into the mirepoix so we can have lunch. Uh, I've got some roasted chicken here that I had from the other night and some roasted potatoes. So I'm just gonna pull some of this chicken off and cut it up a little bit smaller. Uh, leftover soup is exactly how it sounds, soup made with leftovers. <laughs> You can add anything that you have in the fridge. Um, my fallback is usually chicken. I've usually got some sort of chicken in the fridge, but ham would also be delicious. Uh, roasted vegetables and tofu if you're a vegetarian, meat, meat. Um, leftover beans from things as well. So I'm gonna do that and chop that up a little bit. So it's a little bit smaller. And then the potatoes are just a roasted potato that I will cut up a little bit smaller as well. Um, there's some onion in there too, I think. There's our meat portion. So you just want to cut everything to be bite-sized. Um, these are already cooked, so you don't have to worry about the potatoes being too hard or anything like that. Another thing I love to do with leftovers um, when I'm making soup is add mashed potatoes to them and it's a really nice way to thicken your soup without adding any extra, like having to make a roux or add corn starch or anything to thicken it. Um, it makes it feel a bit heartier. So I've also got some greens that I'm going to add to my soup. I've got some kale here, so we'll just cut up a couple leaves of that. Um, not the stalks. With kale, but if you were using something like Swiss chard, spinach, you could definitely keep the ribs on. And you just want to cut this up 
fine. Just gonna bunch it all up together in a bowl. So because this is leftover soup, I don't, uh, I'm not using any stock today. I don't have any stock. So instead what I'm gonna use for flavor alongside the mirepoix that we have sauteing right now, is a little bit of soy sauce that will add some salt and some flavor. And also some lemon juice. So I'm just going to squeeze this lemon juice into here. Pick out the seeds once we have it all done. Hmm. One seed. Two seeds. So we're going to add the lemon juice and the soy sauce to the stock pot first. It'll help deglaze the bottom of the pan, so that'll help release any flavors that might be stuck in, in the bottom. And we're gonna add our leftovers. I'm also gonna add a can of corn, because I've got one liquid and all, it just adds flavor. And then I'm gonna add four cups of water. Your leftover soup so it's just going to simmer on the stove for about 15 20 minutes to help bring out all the flavors and then we're going to eat it with these delicious tea biscuits that we've made thanks for tuning in and really hope you enjoyed the program a big thank you to the province of manitoba safe at home grant which allowed us to bring you these virtual programs Make sure you check out fortwhite.org for a lot more programs and activities. See you again soon.